What's good, people? I'm not taller than him. My chair is just sitting up a little bit higher. Let me ask you, so do you want to give your name? Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Fumi Lyle Solar. I'm from Greensboro, North Carolina. And well, I guess we'll get into the topic. Um, I be having a lot of interesting conversations with the homie. And a lot of conversations I usually don't have. And I like that. I like to be able to delve into different topics with different open-minded people. So my homie's lifestyle is something new to me. I've never met someone with this, with this lifestyle. So it, it kind of engages me to be able to ask questions and get to know people. But I also feel as a community, as a people, we all need to know some of this information because I feel like sometimes we assume. And when we assume, sometimes it's negative, And what that does is create division. But I'm going to let you kind of speak on, you know, yeah. the lifestyle that you had. So um, what he's talking about particularly is I'm transgender. I uh, was assigned female at birth, so I had a girlhood and everything. I transitioned um, roughly about two and a half years ago. So I was like about 25-ish. Um, and so we've had a lot of conversations about like how there's not one particular transgender experience. Like I know most people know about Caitlyn Jenner, who I feel like, her narrative, you know, is fine. She, you know, that's her experience. But like, for a lot of black trans people, we don't just like, all of a sudden just have this one surgery and then just all of a sudden we're one thing or another. Like I was telling him before, like a lot of times you might go through hormonal treatment. Um, you may never have surgeries. Like I don't have any surgeries. I don't plan to have any surgeries. So like, um, we were also talking about like misconceptions about you know, trans people lying about who they are and things. And I'm saying, like, you know... And that can be dangerous in certain First instances. off, I think that, like, any any group of people, like, as black people, for example, I can't say that nobody ever does it. Like, for example, I can't say, like, a black, you know, a black cisgender man never will rob somebody. Yeah, but that still people are mean, people. That doesn't mean I'm yeah, going to come to you yeah. and say, because you're a black guy, you're going to rob me. No, you know what I'm saying? No. But at the same time, you know, I was telling him about my policy with dating and like I'll tell I'll tell a woman that I'm trans before we even go on the first date. And a lot gotcha. of times it's overwhelming to her. And, you know, sometimes I miss out on that situation. But I think it's important to just give get that person that information so you can first for me, I want to know, like, are you down for me? You know, like I want to know, like. Do you, do you really like me? And I don't want to feel like I have to hide such an important part of myself. And then second off, you know, it is dangerous. So it's like, you know... Even people, for you. People can get killed, yeah, you know? Just love hate. Yeah, people get killed. And then also, like, you don't... For me, I don't feel like you should play with somebody's feelings. Like, even if I had a felony, like, <laughs> I'm going to have to eventually tell you I have a felony because that's going to impact our relationship gotcha. down the line, you know? If I had some like uncurable disease, yeah, disease or something or like that, like I feel, so it's not just me being trans. I feel like I, you know, am obligated to tell you, but I feel like at the same time, it's a, it's good to have an open conversation with a person about you saying those type you of as a person. Yeah, as outside a person. of that, you're you're open with yeah. anything you got going on. Yeah, with yeah, you. I'm open in general. Yeah, yeah. But I think too, the um, one thing that I feel like can be disturbing, even with dealing with black men is the fact that we can be very close-minded to something like i don't have to agree with his lifestyle i don't have to agree with it, but i have to respect him i have to understand the humanity of the person that i'm dealing with and i feel like sometimes we separate that sometimes so like could you just go into a little bit and explain it like how does it feel to be born a woman but then you feel like this is not you you know what i'm saying i think people feel like sometimes like it's almost like that's a choice you know what I mean? Like, you don't actually feel that way, but it's almost like a choice you made. Like, you can just go back to being straight. Like, that's just something that you're doing or choosing to be. But me personally, the way I look at it, I feel like, like I say, like a gay male. I feel like, me personally, I don't see a gay male choosing to just, okay, I'm going to be gay. Because for one, the way I look at it, you kind of at the bottom of the totem pole. Like, you being as a black then you being as a male, then being gay on top of that, that means your own people to a certain extent won't fool with you. So I feel like it's not exactly like a choice, but that's you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if you can explain a little bit of like how you felt 
to know, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is not, I don't feel like I am this person that's in this body. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, and this that's a good question because I feel like, first off, you don't want to make an assumption why a person transitioned, right? So it's like, back to what I was saying with, like, the major narrative on TV is like a person feels like, since a child, I felt this way and I felt that way. That wasn't really my experience. So I actually enjoyed being a girl. It's when I hit puberty that I had problems. Mm. So my secondary sex characteristics, like, you know, your your basically things that you develop with hormones, you know, because when boys and girls are little, a lot of times you can't even tell, mm. you know, until, he, you know, the hormones hit. So I happen to have higher testosterone in my body oh, okay. so I had you know I'm not going to get into my medical stuff but like I actually had a full beard like just naturally from, naturally from puberty oh, wow. and I can show you pictures and everything so I was actually born fem assigned female at birth going into women's bathrooms getting reported getting reported and so it was so difficult for naturally. me. Naturally. Naturally. No pills, no and so, surgeries, you know, no. And so, yeah, that was my experience. So my experience as a trans person is a lot different than what most people would expect. Mm. And, I mean, we definitely can. Hi. We definitely can get, like, deeper into that another time. Oh, yeah, but, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. but, like, what I'm saying is, like, you even you making that assumption, that's an assumption. Yeah, yeah, true. And that's fine, but it's like, I think that's why we should have those conversations because, like, everybody's experience is different. And I think that, I think at the end of the day, just wrapping up, cause we kind of, it's just kind of, kind of yeah, vague yeah. right now. Yeah, just, just getting talking. the ball rolling. But I think that we have to, as individuals, understand that we are all different. You know what I'm saying? And I think that the problem lies is based on fear or maybe certain people's past. We create this division, and then when we create this division, one thing that we do, we 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 basically do is we cut off communication. Mm -hmm. And I feel like conversations for us to get to know each other or even understand the whys, and even to the point we're asking. Like if you feel some kind of way about somebody that you really don't know, then maybe you should pull them to the side in a respectful manner and ask more about them before making an assumption. Or, or making us, or maybe if I met someone that was transgender, this and the third, and they moved and act a certain way, and I didn't like it, but I can't judge everybody on one person's interaction. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, we all people. So I think as being people, we got to understand there's different types of people out there. We need to, we need to understand, even if you don't want to understand, at least, at least try your best to respect it. Because, like, like, um... Do I say man, woman, he, she, like how? I go by he. He. Yeah. So like he was saying, like at the end of the day, if this is who you identify is, and that's just how you want to be treated in the world. So if you identify as a male, then that's what you want to be spoke to as as a he, right? Yeah, and I want to just make a point about this too. The way I see it, and like I'm saying, I'm talking about my own experience. Don't extend it to anybody else, but. Identity is how you identify. It's also how others identify you. Mm -hmm. So when I'm walking down the street, do you think people have time to say, oh, that's a transgender person? No. No, I'm treated as a male. When, you know what I'm saying? Like, I had to, ex I had to experience the hard way, like, people treating me differently. I'm like, why is this woman doing this to me? Or why is this? And it's like, sh you, you're being perceived differently now. So what I'm saying is, when you transition socially, you do start to, you do start to experience things that I may experience similar things as you just oh, yeah, out yeah. in public. Yeah. Because so that does become part of your experience. Gotcha. Because at you know first look, they're going to think you're a male. So yeah, how you're yeah. treated is going to be as a black male. Yeah, yeah, certain, yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially incidents. being dark yes, skin, hairy. Yeah. I've all, like, I don't look that much different than when I like started my hormonal treatments. Oh, so wow. what I'm saying is like, I know Even how, with the beard. Yeah, I know how it feels to you know what i'm saying be treated as an outsider even as 
Even female. as a yeah, with a female as with as having female that much hair, even yeah. identify as female, I was kind of pushed out of womanhood. So for me, it was it was a good survival tactic for me to go ahead and transition. But as you see, like I still have kept my femininity. I still I like being pretty. That's what's like, up. That's to me that's a blessing from God. So <laughs> so you know everybody doesn't feel that way though. There are people who feel like you know I've never liked you know some trans guys feel like I've never liked dolls growing up. I've never I've always been out there with the boys that wasn't me i i love barbie dolls like i love fashion so i would always say levels to it it's not and, nobody, and it's not nobody's just, the same nobody's yeah, and it's the not same. just sexuality either because like i've always liked barbie dolls but i'm like oh yeah she's pretty that's gonna be my wife i've always liked women mm. so you know it's just like you can't assume that a trans person is straight or gay or you know you just don't know like i don't even know sometimes if a person's trans Oh, wow. How, like you can't always know so it's just like I, I feel like a lot of trans people what they say clock me or like identify me because like I said before I haven't had surgeries or anything like that so they kind of have that awareness but I mean you don't always know even a person who doesn't have surgery you can't always tell so you know I think that's also a thing when per a person says like I can tell if a person's trans it's like I can't well, let me ask one quick question yeah, and this, yeah. um, to end it up so you identify as a male. So one thing I would ask you, like, if you could give me a breakdown of how you categorize what a male and what a female is since you identify as a male. Oh, man, I can't do that as a quick question. but <laughs> <laughs> That was a good I mean, one, though. Cause what, that's a good question, yeah. but it's like, you know, I make, I make a differentiation between female, male, woman man okay okay you know what i'm saying because to me i think it's to me i think it's helpful to use terms like female and male especially with like animals and stuff like that because it's like that has a lot to do with like your reproductive system and yeah. things like that that's why i say i'm assigned female at birth because yeah. how my re reproductive system and everything but like to be a woman and to be a man that's really hard to define because it's like if you think about other societies like I mean I think that typically when there is a you know there is a connection between womanhood and like mothering or nurturing there is a connection between manhood and like you know um providing hunter gatherer but at the same time it's like we know a lot of families where that doesn't always apply. No, no. And you know, we in a day and age where sometimes it's you can't put people in really boxes. Like you might have, you might be married and you might be a man, but your wife might be the one that cut the grass or check the oil, like in the car. Like it's, it just depends. Then there's like physical aspects that we say are manly or womanly. That's not always like say for example, we could say men are hairy, but it's like. Some women a, are hairy. a lot of women are hair. They shave their legs and shave their armpits. So how would you identify a man? My definition of a man, woof. See, even I would have to write like a five page oh. essay on that. But what I'll say is this. I mean, I think that there is I like to break it down this way. There is an essence of a man, and then there's like kind of that essential definition of what a man is. So it's like most people can see a person be like, oh, that's a man. That's an assumption. But then when you start peeling back the layers, it's like, what does it mean to be a man? And people's definition of what a man is will vary by who you're talking to. Like right? I say, like if I had to say what a man is, so for my, um, it will be a protector. It will be a provider. It will also be, I don't know, like I feel like a man... I feel like we have to be good at whatever's needed. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like that's what it means to be a man. Like, some people are just like, you got to be this. No, no, no. Like, if I'm a single father and I have a daughter and she need to get her hair braided, like, as a man, I'm going to figure out how to braid her hair. You know what I'm saying? And make sure she looks like I'm going to figure out the best way to dress her. I'm going to figure out, you know what I'm saying, how to get that done because it's a task. And like not a gender thing, but as a man, regardless of what it is, I feel like I have to figure it out and get it done, regardless of how it might seem. Because even when I was coming up, you know what I'm saying, my mama couldn't do hair. Like I used to braid my sister hair before she went to school because my mama would send her out of the house looking crazy as hell. But I felt like as a man, it was just like, you gotta do what you gotta do. I feel like that's what a man is. Like it's something in me that knows like if something has to be done, 
I just got to get it done. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so, I feel like that's what a man is to me. What's your like, definition of a woman? I'm just curious. A woman, to be honest with you, I feel like, honestly, I feel like women are stronger than us. I feel like women, to a certain extent, men, the way the world is and the way certain books are, they make it seem like the man is always God and the woman. But I, I know through my life, even being married, my wife has has been a big part of getting me to slow down for a second. Mm -hmm. Think about what's about to happen. Think about how you need to play this out. Voice of reason. Yes, like, so yeah. if she's the voice of reason, I feel like that's what a woman is. She's, she nurtures. She's a voice of reason. She, even though people are always saying, like, I feel like women are really disrespected out here in the world. People are always saying how women are less than. But Especially think, black women. But I think it's the opposite. I feel like the reason why society constantly is beating down women or black women and making them less than, because deep down, the, the powers that be know that it's the opposite. Any man that's married, and some of y'all motherfuckers going to lie, but on some real shit, the woman run the house. Like, you can act like you a man and you did it. No, nah, a woman run the house because if your woman is not happy, ain't nobody happy. Mm -hmm. Now, the daddy can be mad. Don't nobody give a fuck. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just being real. And, but if the uh, woman is unhappy, bro, the kids ain't straight. You ain't going to be straight. So, like, yeah. to me, at the end of the day, you got to understand where the power lies. And the power lies with the woman. Scientifically, a woman, um, a woman matures faster than a the man. There's a reason. The, the higher power that created gave woman the ability to hold life in her stomach and protect it for nine months and give off, you know what I'm saying, life unto the world. Like, that's a, that's, a woman is the closest thing to God. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a God power for her to do that. But then men say this bullshit about giving the seed. No, but he, he mm -hmm. God or the higher power bestowed that power in a woman you know what i'm saying so i feel i feel like women are very powerful beings and the sad part is not to go too too astray from the conversation i feel like it's sad because they don't they act like they don't know it no more women can change the whole world if y'all came together right now and just made a decision to have a certain standard and all the women across the board stuck to that standard the whole world would change because a lot of shit that men do... You can't put that on women, though. But it... Because it's like, that's not it, fair to put on a woman because you have to... Me, at being a person who's been yeah. a woman, like, you have to understand that women are under pressures, too. True. So True. it's like, it has to be a collective thing. And I think that it starts with us, like, really, particularly black people, treating each other like we're a community. So it's like, yeah. I think we were talking about that before, where it's like, if you're gay, we don't want anything. If you're trans... If you're, if you know, if you're not in the church, if you're this, if you're that, and it's just like, you know, at the same time, like, we still have the commonality of being black people, so we need to work together. Like that's why for me, I try, you know, to to talk to cis cisgender uh, straight men like you because at the same time, it's like, I know that you have an impact. You're a barber. Oh, like, yeah. there's so many people you can talk to after having a conversation with me and saying, you know, one of my, you know, one of my clients was talking about this, that, and third. Oh, by educating others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like I think that you know, educating people is important. It's not. I'm not obligated to do it because I'm doing it for free. But I think that it's valuable to do it because, like, who else is going to do it? Somebody has to do it. So what I'm saying is like, you know. um, I'm still learning, you know, I'm still learning what it means to be a man because I've only lived as a man for two years. Gotcha. So I come in humbly. I ask like, you know, typically black men around their forties or so, like who have good style, who have style and grace. Like, what are you up to? What are you doing? We, you know, do tell me where wash do tell, you know? So it's like, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I, I, I come in humbly, like a, like humbly the way like a teenage boy should. Well, let me ask you this. Honestly, since you say you lived as a man for two years, like solidly, um, do you feel since you started that process do you feel because I feel like under pressure wise I feel like men are under press black men are under pressure a little bit more I feel than black women did you do you feel a difference pressure wise I think, from the world I think the pressures are just different honestly I think the pressures are different because I mean for example I had the pressure between you know being almost 30 to get married mm. I don't really feel that pressure anymore 
like in the back of my head i'm like oh you, you know you're about to be 30 you're getting old you need to you know but i'm like at the same time i'm a guy now so it's like and i mean honest you know to be honest like i i know a lot of black women who are pressured you know who are pressured by their parents in a lot of ways and you know you're reproductive system also is part oh, yeah, of it you know yeah. so it's like a man can out. have a baby at my dad was 50 years old basically when he had me you know so it's like he didn't have the pressure of oh i'm 35 i need to you know so i think that's a pressure obviously if you're a single parent that's a, a lot of women are single well the pressure mothers. the pressure i speak of is i feel like imagery and he especially here in the united states when it comes to black males it creates an atmosphere for us because we're constantly now you we're, we've seen incidences of women being mistreated by police and beaten um with sandra bland yeah, yeah. um killed but I, and not to downplay none of that but the the most imagery we see is black males being killed by black males the most imagery we see is black males getting shot by police the more imagery we see the most that's abundant for me that i see is even old school imagery is usually black males being with black males being hung from trees so like i feel like here in the society social media tv it's an imagery pushed and i feel like focus more so on black males than black women not saying they don't go through it not saying they don't feel no kind of pressure but i know as a black man, it's almost a saying that says, um, I was lucky to make it to 21. That's something black men say. Mm -hmm. We've been saying this shit for a very long time. Where the fuck did it come from? Okay. Like, who the fuck said that we wasn't supposed to make it to 21? In our in our minds, mentally, I feel like even coming up as a kid, that's why we be so wild. Because in the back of our mind, we feel like we're going to either die or get locked up. So it's like, because that imagery is pushed on us all the time. Like, Imagine that that not even being your lifestyle, but you constantly seeing images of people that look just like you, treated in a certain manner, killed, you know what I'm saying, being constantly disrespected. And then the information that's out there is like most, most of us are deadbeat dads. So it's like you a deadbeat dad, you either going to be selling drugs, doing drugs, locked up or murdered. Like that's like what's pushed out there media wise to black men. So I feel personally it's definitely a, a certain level of pressure or fear. Like it was times when I'd be walking up and down the street and I would, I would pass a, a large group of black males, maybe younger, maybe around my age and feel uncomfortable. But I got to a point now in my life where like I speak because I understand one, that whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. And two, it's funny how your perception and how you come at a situation will change the situation. You could be walking up on a bunch of dudes and they could be grilling, looking crazy. And I say, what's good with y'all? How y'all feeling? And then everybody starts smiling at you. That happens to me too. Like I was actually, and I'll go back to your point, but I was actually on a bus, like coming from the mall. And it was like, man, at least 35, like 12 to 15 year old boys, black boys. And I was like, oh man, like this is about to be annoying. But like, I, you know, I was, I was telling them, I was like, they were doing slap box and all this stuff. I'm fine with it, but I was like, y'all, hey, you know, Still make sure there. you don't, make sure <laughs> yeah. you don't, yeah, stay your ass it's gonna be there. a problem. Mm -hmm. And then so the guy got off and he was looking around and stuff and he was like, oh, you know, he was asking his friend for a dollar and stuff. And I was like, hey, come over here. I was like, I gave him a dollar for the bus and stuff like that. And you know, I saw a baby. Yeah. When I looked at him, I saw a baby yeah. because I was just like, you know, that's a kind of a front that they're putting on. Mm -hmm. It's like they're roughhousing with their friends. They're having fun, but they still want that mentorship deep down. Oh, it's like when they see me, they see a boy. They want structure. They don't, they don't care. Like I learned that, I learned that, you know what I'm saying, working in high school. When a boy see, when a black boy sees somebody who looks enough like him, it doesn't matter. They don't care about all that extra. But back to what I was saying about women, black women. Growing up as a dark skinned black woman, I feel like I paid it. I feel like we, you paid attention to what applies to you. So it's like, if you think about like almost every black comedian laughs at women, black women, mm. especially is, I mean, it works out that a lot of them are brown or darker, but they, I mean, look at Norbit. Look at look at who the like pretty nice woman was. Oh, you talking look about like the, more like that? And that. I'm talking about the media. 
I'm talking about the media. It's like in black media, black women are humiliated. Mm. You feel me? So it's like, can you imagine how that feels? Black media is humiliating you. Black men are humiliating you. These are these are people who are supposed to be your partners or your mm. brothers or your whatever. And at the same token, I feel like, um, you know, when we really go down to numbers, the CDC post, you know, made had a I think it was from 2018 or so, posted that. 50% of murders of women, like in general, are interpersonal inter, um, um, dating. Inter- interracial? It, no, no. Um, domestic violence. Oh, domestic violence. Of yeah. murders of, of women. And black women and American Indian, American Indian Native women are three times more likely to be murdered by their partners than mm. a white woman. I'm going to tell you something, too. So I know it's like, like, that's a whole other subject, but... To go on that, like, briefly. I know, briefly, we be talking, like, four like, hours, Like, man. briefly, um, <laughs> for one, I used to work at the jail for, like, almost three yeah. years. And okay. the most popular charge in the jail, because, I mean, my I'm bored, I used to flip through the books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was assault on the female. Yeah, yeah. And, and 80%, 75% of the jail is black males. Black males, not just black people, yeah, yeah, yeah. not Hispanic minority like seventy percent of the of the jail is black males, so like this one thing I learned: if I'm a kid and I'm crying and black males are around, they say somebody like a little bitch, mm-hmm. man up, the fuck wrong with you, right? Now if I'm a black female and I'm crying, they say what's wrong? Talk to me. What's going on? Who did something to you? So come, not always if you're a dark skinned girl. I'm, I'm just saying. They, I mean, that's what I'm saying. But that's <laughs> I'm what, telling you, I like if you. I cried, if I cried as a 12 year old, like I wouldn't have gotten the same pity as a light skinned female, light skinned or white or whatever. I'm just saying, like there's even, you know what I'm saying? Um, there are studies that say dark skinned black girls get suspended from school more. Mm. For the same offense of lighter skin girls, so oh, I'm not wow. making it a light skin dark skin thing. But what I'm saying is like when we're saying black, but it is. when we're I saying mean, black, we have to really, you know, I can only talk from my experience as being yeah. a dark skin girl or woman. But at the same time, I mean, like dark skin women don't get as much pity. They, you know, but you got to speak your truth. Like I don't, they know. don't. Like, like I, don't I, know. I ain't never been a. They 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 don't like they don't we they we whatever. But imagine this though. Imagine this. Imagine coming up and you're a male, and whenever you had emotions, your emotions were never like um, engaged. Whenever your emotions came and you cried or you felt bad, someone told you that your emotions were wrong. Yeah, yeah. They told you to toughen up. That means to pretty much repress your emotions. Yeah. So boom. Now. You going up high school, college, whatever, you feel like emotions are bad. You're not supposed to show them because if you do, you're weak. Now, tell me, when a black man gets in a relationship with a woman and you really love that woman, isn't that an emotional situation? In your whole life, you were told to repress your emotions. So what happens when you can't communicate to her or something's not working out with her? And you don't know what to say, or you don't feel like she's respecting you like you should. Now you go to putting your hands on her, and not the excuse because putting your hands on a woman is always right. wrong. But I feel like us as a society need to work harder on teaching these young boys to articulate their emotions. And that and fighting isn't the only way to solve problems. And it's, and it's, and it's, it's o- and it's also okay. To talk about how you feel. Yeah. Process when a little boy is crying or he's emotional. Process with him what's going on. Yeah. Like, don't tell him he's wrong for crying because that's how he feels. That's that's how inside of him is emotional and he's crying because that's how he feels. You can't tell him that he doesn't feel that way or he should be ashamed that he feels that way. Talk to him. And even like me as a trans guy, that hurts me a lot in relationships because like women will be into me, but then when I show kind of like my emotionality they're like oh well my exes they didn't care about this they didn't. but they also didn't invest in you as much emotionally like mm-hmm. the amount of emotional labor i'm willing to do a lot of men don't even know how to, like cisgender men don't know how to do so it's like i can invest a lot of emotional energy and attention into a woman but then because i'm a highly emotional person you're gonna have to deal with my emotions too mm-hmm. you know so it's like i think that there has to be work you know, and I'm making this kind of like a heterosexual situation because we, we date women. But, like, 
you know, I think that that applies with men and men, women with women. Like, you have to understand that, like, you can't just have your cake and eat it, too. So, like, when men start to open up about their emotions, Talk there's going to be emotions. Like, yeah. <laughs> there's going to be emotions. Sometimes we don't want it to and be And the way this day and age is, too, when he opens up about his emotions, it probably is a situation where he's not comfortable. Yeah. And if you kind of talk to him in a manner to belittle him or make him seem like he's not a man by doing that, that might play out in a bad way. Because I feel like he... And I'm not trying to make no excuse, but I feel like he's maybe trying to go above what he's comfortable at to open up. Because a lot of men are not built for that shit. Like when men aren't good at talking about emotions. Like and the crazy part is, and motherfuckers gonna hate me for saying this shit, I feel like men are more emotional than women. So you got men that suppress all these emotions that we feeling. And that's not so that means at some point the nigga blow up and you trying to figure out what the fuck is wrong with him. And then I think another thing is this, like Hormones have a lot to do with how you feel. Like, before, I was like, you know, gender's gender, and sex is sex. Like, a lot of it's socialization, which is true. But there's a lot uh, that hormones have to do with how you impact. Like, for example, when I was on testosterone, which is like the male hormones, I would I experienced anger differently. Mm. Before, like, I would be mad and be mad, and it builds up and it builds up, and eventually I blow up. But then, at like, when I was on the male hormones... I would feel flashes of anger. Like I would rage. be so mad. I was like, why am I so mad? And they're like, it's your hormones. You know, so I think that men and women have to realize, like, hormones have a lot to do with it. Socialization has a lot to do with it. Childhood trauma has a lot to do with it. And a lot of us have been through childhood trauma. And I think a lot of a lot, a lot of, of us, like as black people, need therapy. Hell yeah. <laughs> you I know, because our, our partners can't I see fix. A therapist myself. Yeah, our our partners can't fix everything. It's we not can't their expect child. them to yeah. do it. We have to do a lot of self work. And it's gonna take a lifetime. But we're gonna be whole. better. Yeah, you gotta you gotta wanna wanna be whole. You and so be whole. and so like for me, I know like it's easy as a trans person to start just settling for anything like oh well she gives me some attention or she has a boyfriend on the side and but i have to remind myself like you have to carry yourself as a person that deserves respect but with that being said you have to also offer respect and when you have been disrespectful to somebody or you have made mistakes you have to fess up to it you have to move forward you know you have to be honest honest about it so i try i think honesty and I mean, like, I don't, I don't know if you knew about on the Black Breakfast Club what happened with, like, Janet Mock. And we'll, we'll talk about that another time. But, like, basically, she's a black trans woman who's, like, she's basically, like, the Michelle Obama of, you know, trans, trans. black trans women. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, like, Laverne Cox is kind of like the Beyonce. And then she's, like, not to compare trans women with cisgender women, but I'm saying just giving you context of, like, how powerful she is in the community. Yeah. So, like... I mean, that's what she said. Honesty is the best policy. Like, when you meet a person, being honest with them about things that you know are going to pop up and probably mean a lot to them or that mean to... Because me being a trans person, I would expect a trans person to tell me they're a trans person. I'd or like, you'd be disrespected. You or you feel I wouldn't kind of feel disrespected because, I, you know, like, I know why a person wouldn't disclose, but at the same time, it's like, you know, I think that... They're gonna find out anyway, so you might as well tell them up front. Especially like me be, not having me not having surgery. Like you're gonna know. Well, so. I feel like it could be dangerous. Like I feel like the I, more a person is in, emotionally invested in you, the more dangerous it becomes. So, like for example, if I have an ex, if I have, if I'm still married and I have a wife, I don't. But I'm saying if I have a wife and I'm talking to this woman, talking to her, selling her dreams, telling her I'm gonna marry her, and I have a wife, I have a whole wife. Yeah. And yeah. I didn't tell her that. Like, when are you going to tell her? Oh, no, you're right. <laughs> like, but I also look at it like, well, from a male point of view, let's say you you go out with this chick, you think it's a chick, but it's really... Uh, I'll be careful. What? what the what, way you're expressing it. The saying chick? No, no, just I'll keep going. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just, I just got to be yeah, honest. Like, I, I got to be honest. So, like, let's say if I was to go out with, a, um, with somebody I perceived to be a female mm-hmm. and... But they're not. They're really transgender, but they're really, um, yeah, they're transgender, but they're really male. Let's say if we hanging out this hand the third, and let's say, like, we go back to the car and she perform, or he, or however you want to put it, perform oral sex, and then come out 
a day or two or three later, I find out that that's really a male, that's dangerous. Because I feel like somebody could be killed because of that. Because that's like a false. Because if, if you didn't give me the choice, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like as a man that's not gay, I feel like I should be allotted the choice to make whether I want to deal with someone that's going through a change or someone that's a male, period. Like, I feel like if you don't give me the choice, then that's going to be a problem. That could be dangerous, almost death or, or hurting somebody because what you did was you put me in a situation, me unknowingly, while you took my choice away from me. You know what I'm saying? And you also, that could, situation like that can make a heterosexual male question his sexuality. But it's a person that was started off being heterosexual and didn't want to be gay. You see what I'm saying? So I feel like to keep it a hundred, like situations like that, somebody could get hurt. But I feel like that's why I'm saying the honesty part is big for me because I need to be able to make that decision. I don't want nobody making that decision for me. Right, right. So what I would say about that is um, trans women are women. They're not male. They're not men. But trans women are women. Trans men are men. But we have trans experience. Okay. So that's something that I, you know... I have to be responsible and kind of like give you a little pushback on that because um, I feel like it's a great I have to area. Give, I have to give you a little pushback on that. Oh, no, no. We're having a real conversation. We don't have to as, agree. But as far as like expressing to a person that you are trans, like I said, my policy, definitely before we, we touch and do anything. But, I mean, there's a girl who I was really into. Like, I was like, yeah. I'm really into her, but I was like, let me just go ahead and tell her before we even go to the movies. And we ended up not going to the movies. Okay? Oh, because of when you told her she didn't want And it could have been for whatever reason, you know, like I'm not saying that's why, yeah. but at the same time, it's like, you know, I know that I also have other factors. Like I can be a little intense when I ask people out because I'm like, I'm asking you out, what is this? What is it? Because, you know, I ask questions, oh, gotcha. you know, still so to you feel like, like it, it might not, it might not have been a trans thing. It could have been something else. But what, but let, but let me, but, but back to what I was saying about yeah. letting a person know, like yeah. we said that before, you know, I'm not saying life is fair, <laughs> but that's the reality of it. Like there are major things. And experiences that a person has that are biggies and I think like being a trans person is a biggie like that's something that for me I, I want to know that I'm with a person who is okay with me being trans like exactly. even you being my barber like I yeah. told you because I don't want to keep paying a dude who is transphobic oh yeah true. I don't want to keep paying you you know for my hair even though you're doing a good job yeah. somebody else can do a good job and you know what I'm saying and so what I'm saying to you is I think that being, you know, telling a person you're trans isn't the only thing that you should be open about. But oh, true, true. true. It is a, but it should be a, risk, a part of it. It's a, it's a risk. Yeah. For that person, and it's also to me, if I'm going to be with you long term, you're going to know anyway. Like I said before, a lot of black trans people don't have money for surgeries, so a lot of the people who are being murdered, honestly, they've been dating that person or they've been hooking up with that person and. People are start like the person's afraid. Like you watch all those murder shows. Yeah. Every time there's a black trans woman on there, they go through her phone, and they find out that the guy knew that she was trans. She told him. No, no, no. But what I'm not, I'm not even saying like. So what I'm saying is like yeah, yeah, with I'm those not particular, like, a lot of murders of black trans women is not black trans women not telling people. Oh no, but I'm not even. But that's, but that's not even. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's not even what I was saying. I wasn't no, no, saying. I, what yeah, you're saying, no. I, I was just saying. saying like as a straight male, yeah. I feel like. Out of respect, you know what I'm saying? I don't have nothing against, you know, anybody in the LGBTQ community at all. But I'm heterosexual, so I'm attracted to women. And that's what I'm into. So if I was dealing with somebody that was trans, but they were in, like, a woman form, like a female, I would, if it got to that point where they felt like I was into them, but you got to know, like, I'm into you because I think that you're fully a woman and always been a woman. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I feel like you was born a woman and that's what you are. Like, I might be into you because I'm, I'm getting to the point where I want to get married. I want to have kids. Like, you don't know, you don't know what the person ha intention is for you in the future. So the only way to ha have that is to communicate honestly 
in the interactions. Like, you know, hey, I see, you know, we're talking this and third. I can tell that you're 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 intrigued by me. I'm gonna let you know I mean I used to be a man. I feel like that's only right because that if I knew that, then it gives me the ability. Cause some guys might be with it. Some guys I know with it. I done heard stories. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but that's just not me. So what I'm saying is I need to have the ability to make the decision. I'm not saying that the person is wrong for being transgender or gay or whatever. That's cool. But as a heterosexual male dealing with a transgender or, or gay or whatever, I feel like we should just, it should be open and honest. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it should always be open and honest so the person, persons can make the decision what they want to do or not. That's all I'm saying. Because anything outside of that, I feel like it's deceitful. I, I agree with you in a, in a sense, like, except I think, you know, if I think trans women are women, I don't think that a trans woman has to say, I used to be a man. I used to be like, you don't have to do all that. Just, you know, I think that when you're disclosing that you're trans and I can only speak as a trans yeah. man, you know, yeah. I, I, I want to be very careful not to talk about trans women's experience because I'm not a trans gotcha. woman. Gotcha. But what I say, what I will say is like, I don't think the conversation has to go like, okay, I used to be a girl. I used, to, Even though for me, I feel like I used to be a girl, right? I feel like I used to be a girl. Every trans person doesn't feel like they used to be the sex they were assigned. So I feel like they so were. They, so they should never, you should never say what you don't feel. Got you. But at the same token, I think that especially when you're dealing with a person who's cisgender and typically heterosexual, like, just save yourself and save that other person to grief. I think I understand you know what, what you're saying? saying. I think I, I think just I. Sa I feel like it's just better to save yourself the heartbreak, save that person the heart, the potential heartbreak. Because like at the same time, if the person really loves you, like say for me, a person can say, "Oh, you can't have kids together." I still got my eggs. I can put my egg in her body. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Baby, so you can that, carry so my baby. It's just gonna look different, right? It's gonna be a little different. So what I'm saying is, like, if that person really is down for you, yeah, their parents, all this, all that, all that, to a certain you extent, figure it out. Like you figure it out. We saying the same thing. No, we are. Yeah, saying we the saying same the same thing. We're, We're just saying, saying it from a different, different way. perspective. Exactly. We so saying what I'm saying is, like, once again, I'm gonna be clear. You know, I don't think any trans person has to say, I used to be this or yeah. I used to be that. But that's the part I'm catching on that you're saying. What you're yeah, saying yeah. Whatever they identify you as. You don't have my community attacking me. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, like, it's not even like that. I'm but, trying to understand. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But this for real, is, but for real I have to be very, 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 I have to be very careful because our community is so tiny. Yeah. So like anything a trans person says, like a person could take it as you representing the everybody. truth. And I'm like, but this you're is just my you. truth. Yeah, yeah, so I'm yeah, saying me it. as a, you know, as a trans guy who pretty much is perceived as a male, even without surgeries, like my perspective is going to be a lot different than somebody who isn't perceived as whatever they transition to. Especially like, even for me as a person who grew up as a bearded lady mm. who's not accepted as a woman, even though I'm assigned female at birth, my experience with that is way different. But I will say this, like the the issue is like you can't just you can't just say, okay, this person is like for me, I'm just speaking for me. Okay, he's a man. So now we can compare us to. Oh. I, Cause it's like you grew up as a boy. Yeah. You have all of these lessons learned as a boy, as a man, all of these things. I grew up as a girl. Exactly. I have lessons learned as well. So it's like there's it's things that different. we can say to each other and learn from each other. Oh, definitely. There's connections that we have. But at the same time, it's not like same. I come in humbly when I want to learn about, you know, interaction between women and men from a men's, man's perspective, perspective because I've only lived as a man for two years. And so there's mistakes that I make with women that you know being being a stud or being you know a, a lesbian that that was fine but now i can't make i can't do the same things you know what i'm saying even dealing with you know queer women mm -hmm. so you know i try to come in humbly get mentors older than me and you know you know talk to brothers like this and and try to learn but at the same time, I think that like we have to be more welcoming to each other because oh, yeah. there's teenage boys that come to me for advice. Yeah. There's guys my age that come to me for advice and say, why is she acting like this? Why is she doing this? Why is she doing that? 
I still hang out with women. But I think the essence. So I think the essence doesn't change. I think the essence of relationship and love, mm-hmm. you know, regardless of your, you know, your physical. Like I feel like the essence doesn't change. But but I also say too, out of this, like wrapping up this conversation yeah. we having, it's a part of it that I I don't quite understand, and I have to like figure that out you know what i'm saying because you one thing you, that i noticed you kept saying you kept saying like i feel like a transgender man or woman they are you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. like you like you were born female but you say like i'm a man that's what it is and you was like i don't feel like they have to exactly say that it's good if they do but you feel like because you identify with that that you are and i feel like because of our perspectives that that part of it is look like a little confusing for me because I feel like if you used to be something, I feel like as a heterosexual male, I would want to know. But I That's know not what I said though. Oh. What, I, what what I'm saying specifically is, if I'm, for example, like I meet a woman, I meet a woman randomly, you know, she doesn't know I'm trans, and I'm openly trans. You can, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah, I've done yeah. activism and everything, so yeah. you're gonna know I'm trans. But anyways, like if I meet a woman and she's into me and she doesn't know I'm trans. I don't feel like I have to express to her, I used to be a girl, I used to be a female, da 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 because if I don't feel like I used to be a girl female, then I shouldn't say that. Mm. But what I can express to her is, I'm a transgender man. I'm a man with a transgender experience. But like <coughs> I said, I feel like I've had a girlhood. I feel like I've, I mean, being, I feel like being a black girl, being a black woman, especially a dark skinned one, that has helped me become tougher. Mm. That has helped me um, be more, more kind, more, more like uh, be able, be able to express my emotions in ways that if I was assigned a male at birth, I probably wouldn't be expressing. I probably would have five baby mamas by mm. now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but like, um, but what, you know, that was a joke. But that was like, terrible. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, anyways, what I'm saying is like. I don't I don't think it's for me I don't think it's appropriate to say like oh um you know a, like a, a transgender woman was a man or was a, that's not true you know like she wasn't she, she wasn't a man that's the part I'm trying to figure out like she I, wasn't a man I but what I'm saying is like I'm not going to talk about transgender women because I'm a transgender not one. man gotcha, gotcha. so I want to be careful like gotcha. you wouldn't want to talk about a cisgender woman like yeah, black I, I can't that's, speak from her perspective uh, that's, I'm that's not, kind of playing yeah, with fire. Yeah. But what I'm saying is like, for me, I think that it's good to let people know those kind of things. Because like, one, they're going to know eventually with me, I'm open and I don't have surgeries. So we're go- you're going to know. And then two, point. I want you to know that I would tell you. Because mm. that's building trust with the person. Being open and honest. That's building trust. It's not just you knowing. It's you knowing that I am the one who took the step to tell you. And I say that even with me, like with cheating and things like that. I'm not saying I'll stay with you if you cheat on me. But I will consider you coming to, if I hear from you first, I will consider that. So at the end of the day, it's not a transgender male woman. It's a it's, general. But it's a character thing. It, yeah, to it's me. A, and, and, you know, I want to be careful because I think that people are under different pressures yeah. to not, ex, you know, to express that to people and things like that. So I'm not going to say you're a liar if you don't. Uh, but I don't, don't, underst- I don't understand. That's why we having this conversation. Yeah, yeah. Because but I, what I'm yeah. saying is like where I am in my, my level of sense of safety and my experience, I feel comfortable. And me being. And me being a trans trans man talking to a woman, even if she feels like I'm a woman, like she's like, oh, look at this stud trying to talk to me. It's not the same pressures as a trans woman and a, you know, and a cisgender man. So I'm going to say that, too. Right. So I'm speaking from a privileged perspective gotcha. as, you know, a, as a transgender man. But what I will say is like, you know, just. Save yourself the grief. That's why I say if I if I could talk to like a, a teenage trans people, like save yourself. Even if you don't care about the other person's feelings, like think about your own feelings. Like, do you really want to be with a person who doesn't accept you? Gotcha. You know, like. Gotcha. So wrapping it up, like, how could they let's say they want to contact you and ask some questions, or like, how could they contact you? Do you like IG? Like, are you open to even? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got IG O underscore Foom, and I'll text that to you mm-hmm. and. um 
yeah that's the main way to get to me so you know i'm always open to answer and once one another thing is back to what we were saying about answering questions ask people who are willing to answer questions questions right because like people a lot of a lot of us like we don't have jobs because people won't hire us we you know we are, we're, our safety or our safety is compromised a lot. We don't have time to be educating for free, right? Yeah. Only some, like I'm just telling no, the I truth. Like saying. especially black trans women, like like you shouldn't expect a black trans woman to just like tell you everything about her soul. You know, like mm. pay her. <laughs> or 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 at the same time, they don't like almost look at like they don't owe us anything. Yeah, like yeah. that's like a white person coming to you I asking think, you about black, you know, yeah. black your experiences. But as a black I think man. we have a relationship based on me cutting yeah. your hair and conversing. Yeah. And I over would talk time. to you anyway yeah. because I, I just am an educator at at nature. Gotcha. I love to facilitate. I, I like to the right person, and I love to talk. Yeah. I went to school for <laughs> communication. You actually have to shut me up. Yeah. Um, so we're so, wrapping it up. Yeah, yeah, we're wrapping it up. But what I will say is. There are all kinds of resources, especially like YouTube and stuff like that, where people are literally putting their experiences out there and, you know, do some research on your own. But, you know, come to people like me when I feel like it. I'll educate you when I feel like it. Sometimes I don't feel like it. But like, you know, if I can help anybody understand experiences, my experiences and experiences of black trans people a little bit better then I will. But like I said before. You can't you, you can't take what I'm saying as a general statement. Yeah, I can only speak for myself, for especially once again, once again. Do not take what I'm saying about me being a black trans man Very. and then applying that to black trans women. Please don't do that. We don't want no smoke. I don't want any we smoke. We don't want no smoke. So I'm just talking as a black guy. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want no smoke. Yeah, so. But I think conversations like this, it's a good start. So that's yeah. what it was about. I don't know everything about it. So it was good to have um, the brother open up and give me information and perspective. Because then going forward, I understand more about the subject. Or and, and it's like sometimes it's good because things won't seem foreign or weird or strange if we just talk to each other. So appreciate y'all checking us out. And thank you, brother. Yeah.